Hi everyone and welcome to this video. So I'm going to talk about this power supply unit here. I bought this about six months ago and it's a bit peculiar really. I mean DC output 5 volts 6 amps. That's peculiar for a power supply. Um, so typically power supplies would usually be 12 volts or 6 volts or 9 volts or, or something like that. They wouldn't usually be 5 volts. However 5 volts is, is a standard when it comes to um, you know, phones and stuff like that. Chargers are typically about 5 volts, but then they're not 6 amps. 6 amps is a lot of current. They're usually about 1 to 2 amps. So it's a bit unusual, and the size and the shape is a bit unusual too. Anyway, so, this thing is quite efficient. It says 15%, which is quite efficient. So it's an AC to DC converter, uh, or power supply, if you want to call it that. I um, got one of these cables here off something, a I don't know, a monitor or a PC or something, you know, just, I've got loads of these things and I cut the end off and um, wired them up and I give it a test and it works it gives 5 volts, now it's got a little converter, uh, not a converter, a little adjuster here and the adjuster basically goes from, uh, it was set at 5 volts but you can adjust it from 4.5 to 5.5 volts and uh, that's quite useful however um, it's not what I want it to do. It's not doing what I want it to do in terms of the voltage. So the reason why I bought this thing was to charge lithium cells. And lithium cells charge at about 4.2 volts, or at least that's what they are when they're fully charged. So yeah, charge these cells up. Um, in fact, that's an interesting thing as well, six amps. I could charge a lot of cells. Um, with that thing there. I mean, typically cells will uh, probably take about 500 milliamps each, sometimes a little bit more. Depends on the exact cell, really, but yeah, that should be char enough to charge quite a lot of cells at the same time. Anyway, so these are the cells that I charged. <coughs> the four lithium polymer cells. And um, yeah, so I, I adjusted here to get it as low as it would go, and then the lowest voltage it can go is 4.5 volts. Now lithium cells you're not supposed to charge at that voltage, it's way too high. Well not way too high, but it's too high. You're supposed to charge them at about 4.2 volts, and you can actually go more than that if you want, you can go to 4.3 or so, but above that is not recommended, and uh, the recommended amount of voltage to charge at is 4.2 volts. I've charged these at 4.5, which is not wise really. Um, However, a one-off, it's, it's not so bad, but um, apparently it will, it will um, make them not last as long. It will reduce their life uh, expectancy. Anyway, so what am I doing? Well, I've got this thing here. It's 4.2, 4.5 volts. I need to reduce it to 4.2, but I can't do that because it's already reduced. And that leads me to, um, to want to fiddle with this thing. Now, you see the variable resistor there, or the potentiometer. You can see that it says 201, so that's 20 with uh, 10, which is 200 ohms. And of course it's variable, so it's 0 to 200 ohms. I don't know what that's set at at the minute. Is it set at 0 or 200 ohms? I don't really know. But what I want to do is fiddle with this thing and try and do something so that I can set it to 4.2 volts, because that would be much better for my cells. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. and. Um, this will then be my charger uh, for lithium cells and I'll be able to do something so that I can charge lots at the same time and also I think 4.2 volts will be able to power an Arduino um, uh, Pro Mini or something like that or a Nano and that will be even better because then I could um, put some intelligence into the charging process as well. Alright so here it is now there are some capacitors in here that I don't want to be, yeah no Danger high voltage inside, do not remove the cover, qualified personnel, blah blah blah. That's because there's probably a capacitor or something inside which could be holding a charge. And uh, at uh, 240 volts, um, potentially that could be, uh, well, what could it be? It can peak at about 400 volts, which is just insane. I don't know what sort of charge is in that capacitor inside, and I don't particularly want to know either. Anyway, let's open it up. But yeah, common sense, don't touch the thing, as long as I don't touch that capacitor or touch the board near it or anything like that, I'll be fine. Right, so how do I open this? 
Oh, do I open it? That's the question. I guess that's something to do with it there. Let's see. Alright, so I've undone that. And it just comes straight off, that's good. Wow, that's a strong bit of tape. Ugh. Right, okay. So that's the, the uh, protective cover. Now that's the capacitor that I don't want to touch. Oh, okay. <coughs> There's a quick blow, blow fuse in there. Capacitor, some other little capacitors. Resistor, transistor, MOSFET. Heatsink, a little transformer, that big capacitor that I won't be touching. Yeah, it says 400 volts on it. Some diodes, that'll be the bridge rectifier. Another transformer coil thing. Another MOSFET. A chip. And some resistors. Right, so what do I want to do? Basically, all the stuff that I want to do, the bit that controls the voltage, I mean, a lot of these components will be selected for the voltage that I want. But, the actual voltage, or the, the trimming bit, the, the bit where we actually refine the voltage and select the voltage that we want, will be here. So the circuitry for that will be here. So basically it's a case of messing around with that. So, first things first, let's just tidy that up. That, I, don't want, I don't like that being bent like that, that's better. Although I see why they've done that, they don't want it to touch the case. Okay, so I need to get this board out of here. Now, is there paste on here or are they put straight into there? Hmm. I need to undo these as well, these little screws. I think I'm going to have to take this out completely. So let's take this out. And this one will have to come out too, wherever it is. Out there somewhere. Where is the screw for that? There it is. Yeah, it's quite a nice design this actually. So is that going to come out? I'm very cautious that I don't want to be touching any of this stuff inside here because I don't know what's, what's high voltage and what's not. Presumably only that only one side is uh, potentially dangerous, but you just don't know. Okay, so let's push this out of here. Whoa. Now it should pull out. Oh, oh, there's another screw there. There we go. I think that's got thread lock or something on it. Right, it says, right, what does that say, HS2, and just as an LS, no, I was thinking the high side, I don't know, right, let's zoom out a bit, and then now it should pull out, yeah, there we go, and it's plastic underneath, so that, of course, the components don't, uh, don't sorry, don't short against each other. Right, so now we have that thing. The bit I want to mess with is there. Right, and there we go. So presumably, yeah, that's the high voltage side there. See this divider? This is the high voltage side and that's the low voltage side, presumably. Well, it's the low voltage side I need to play with. So you see the, the three points here, one, two, and three. I believe that is the bit, oh, I'm not in camera there, I believe that's the bit there which controls the final voltage and that's 201 so 200 ohms. What I'd like to do is take that resistor out and replace it with my own. Yeah. Now the thing is I may have already set that to be 0 ohms or I might have set it to be 200 ohms. I don't know at the moment, I don't know how that's set, it's either 0 or 200. Now if it's 0, 
and 0 equates to 4.5 volts out, how am I going to work with that? I don't really know. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take that out and, and try to I'll probably replace it with a 200 ohm resistor and see what voltage it gives and then I'll replace it with a 0 ohm well which is basically shorting together and then see what happens then yeah I need to remove it